Hello everyone, in this tutorial we will be talking about microsites but to fully cover this topic we will have to talk about multi-site plugin that you get out of the box from Sitecore when you are installing uh, your first site through XM Cloud. We will be talking about um, content restructure, about site collections, sites, then we will be talking about Visual Studio structure because we will have two XJS applications one for main corporate website and the second one for microsites. We will be talking about Resell because we will be deploying these two uh, Next.js applications to two projects in Resell. We will be talking about a multi-site plugin, how to modify out-of-the-box implementation to support uh, our configuration. And also we will be talking about rendering hosts because we will have to create additional rendering hosts uh, for microsites. So let's start from Sitecore and as you can see on the screen on the left hand side we have a main corporate website and microsites. These two uh, folders are these are site collections. You can add a new site collection when you click on the content item and you basically insert a new item which will be um, a new site collection. Under site collection you can create sites and as you can see on the main corporate website, we have one site which is called main corporate website. And basically, when you're creating your first site, Sitecore will create site collection and site with the same name. So you will have this structure uh, automatically. Uh, so we want to keep our main corporate website separately from our microsites. Below microsites, I created two sites. One is microsites template and microsite A. Microsite A is my final microsite with the domain, the URL, this is the, the, the site with the content. Microsite template, it's a site that I want to use to create layouts, components, renderings. So this will be a shared template that I will use for all of the microsites. To configure it, you have to click on the microsite uh, microsites node which is a site collection as you can see on the on the right hand side under sharing shared sites I've selected microsite template and this is the shared site and all the sites under the same site collection will share this and will have access to uh, layouts and renderings so the next part of the configuration is Visual Studio because we have two site collections uh, one for main corporate website and the second for um, microsites and we want to keep them separately because we don't want to rebuild and redeploy main corporate website uh, just because we are fixing one simple bug for microsites that's why we don't want a, a risk of rebuilding redeploying our business critical main corporate website we want to keep them separately and in Vercel we will have one site for main corporate website, one project, and the second project for all microsites. Uh, we want to keep components, layouts, everything separately. That's why we will have two separate Next.js application in, applications in our Visual Studio. As you can see, I have two folders, one main corporate website and um, microsite template. We will use um, main corporate website to deploy to Vercel um, as a project one and a microsite template we will deploy to Vercel as project two. In terms of Vercel configuration we will have two projects one for main corporate website and the second project for uh, microsites. I will show you quickly how to configure it uh, and where the difference is. Basically we will build these two projects in the same way we will only change root directory for these projects. For main corporate website, it will be source main corporate website. For microsites, it will be source microsite template, uh, the folder that you have in Visual Studio. So Versa can find uh, the Next.js application and all the other steps are the same. Of course, you will have to configure a site query API key, a GraphQL endpoint and uh, app name. But this is something probably that you know already or you will find in the documentation anyway. So the next thing we, we need to um, modify is a multi-site plugin from Sitecore. 
you can find it under your Next.js application, uh, scripts, config, plugins, and this is the file you, you want to uh, configure. But it's not going to be a configuration, it will be a modification because out of the box implementation takes all the sites. But to, to know what we're doing, I need to explain what out of the box implementation does. So basically, the out of the box implementation takes all the sites from Sitecore. So in our case, it will be main corporate website, it will be um, microsite template, uh, it will be microsite A, all the sites that we have in, in Sitecore content tree, which is something that we don't want to do because for microsites, we want to exclude um, main corporate website. We may want to also exclude um, microsite template because this is not our content site. We will use it as a template with uh, layouts and components, but it's not going to be our uh, one of our microsites or, or uh, landing pages. Uh, that's what we want to do for microsites, but for main corporate website, we only want to be able to render and um, know. We, we need to know only about uh, main corporate website. We don't want to know anything about uh, microsites and uh, microsite template. So what we can do, we can basically get all the sites and then filter it uh, as I did it here. I'm hard coding the name of the uh, site. You can create um, config uh, variable and pass this value through variable. Uh, but for the sake of the presentation, I'm hard coding it so you can see uh, what I'm doing here. So this uh, variable will contain all the sites and uh, I'm excluding Microsoft main corporate website. So this um, site variable will contain all the sites uh, excluding a main corporate website. And I'm going to do the same for main corporate website, but instead of, uh, so I'm going to do scripts configuration plugin um, we'll see side. So in this case, uh, I'm going to do if name equals main corporate website, which means that I will have only this site and my application will know uh, how to render this site. So this is how we can modify out of the box implementation to make sure that main corporate website will only understand how to render main corporate website and our multi-site um, implementation microsites will know how to implement, how to render all the microsites. The one thing to remember is that this function is uh, triggered during build. So every time you add a new microsite to your content tree, you have to add custom domain in Vercel, but also you have to redeploy your um, microsite template. So that's something that you need to do every time you create a new site uh, because um, this function is triggered only during build time. So the last thing that we need uh, in terms of the configuration to make sure that we have full support for microsites is a rendering host and you need the rendering host to be able to preview your uh, front-end application you had locally and also you need a rendering host that you can deploy to, um, to XM Cloud. So then you can use Experience Editor, one for on the main corporate website and the second one for microsites. Uh, so I will show you how to create both uh, because one is um, a Docker instance and the second one is a configuration uh, that will be used when you deploy your changes to Cycle Cloud. So the first thing we need to change, or we need to add actually to um, a dot n file uh, are two URLs. One is your microsite local host, and the second one is uh, rendering. This one will be used um, internally inside the Docker, and this is uh, the URL that you will use to preview your head application. So once we have these two variables, we can move on to um, docker compose override file so inside the docker compose uh, override file uh, what i've done i copied uh, this section this is out of the box standard uh, implementation for 
uh, my uh, rendering host and I uh, made a copy of it. Uh, I changed the name rendering microsites. Uh, my original rendering host is pointing or is using um, rendering folder. I'll show you this folder in a second because I copied this as well. Uh, inside of this folder we have docker file that um, runs a docker, runs the, the application inside the docker, so it's an npm run and uh, npm run connected or start connected. So that's what we want to use, we use for both uh, rendering hosts, but we need to pass and mount different folders. So for the main corporate website, um, mounting volume um, main corporate website under source. So this is my Next.js application. And for rendering host microsites, I'm using a second rendering microsite Docker um, config file and I'm mounting microsite template folder instead of a main corporate website. So I'm passing Next.js application from microsite templates. Of course, I updated uh, the name of the image and the rendering host microsites and to make sure that public URL is, is different. Uh, under, under Docker build uh, rendering, this is the original out-of-the-box rendering host um, Docker file implementation. So I'm doing uh, what Sitecore is basically doing. NPM, it's running npm install inside. Uh, and uh, the work directory is up folder, which means that we will be seeing our Next.js application inside of this folder. Uh, so we are just running npm install and npm run start connected. I'm doing the same for rendering host for microsites, but because of uh, our changes or our implementation in uh, in Docker Compose override file, I'm passing a different folder and in this um, Docker um, container we will run uh, rendering host for microsites and it, we will be using microsite templates for it. And But we will be doing the same thing, we will be running npm install and npm run start connected inside our Docker. The next thing uh, the next thing we need to do um, is to create certificates and to do it we need to go to init PowerShell script uh, where we are creating certificates for all the other um, URLs and we need to add uh, one line here which is um, star dot microsites uh, dot localhost the same well the name can be you can have a different name, but basically you need to make sure that you are adding it here. So then during running the script, you uh, you will create additional certificate for your microsites. And also you will be adding a uh, host entry, uh, dub, 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 a microsites localhost in line uh, 107. The last thing we need to change or modify is the search uh, config file under uh, docker terrific configuration because we need to uh, create two paths to our certificates to make sure that traffic will not draw any errors when we will be navigating to our new microsite URL. So that's all for our local rendering host and now when we run um, init PowerShell script to create certificates. We can run init uh, PowerShell script without parameters, assuming that you have updated a path to your uh, license file and uh, the, the password uh, to your local XM cloud. And uh, we have to run init and then uh, up PowerShell script to generate and create uh, our additional rendering host. Uh, I will show you in a second how to use it locally and how to uh, create a configuration that you can use to deploy rendering calls to XM Cloud uh, when you are pushing your changes to XM Cloud. By default, when you create all the containers locally, you can use uh, Experience Editor uh, that is pointing to your XM Cloud instance. Uh, of the rendering host, uh, but that's the only one you have. This is the default one, as you can see on the screen. This is the one that you uh, can use. If you want to use 
um, a local rendering host. And this is what we want to do. We want to have two local rendering hosts that we can assign in our uh, configuration locally. We need to add a new local rendering host um, item and we need to change the configuration uh, of the server. Well, we need to update it basically because it will be empty when you create this item. Uh, so we have to create two, one for rendering host, which is our default one for um, main corporate website. And we need to create a second uh, item and we need to update this path here in here to point to rendering host microsites, the second rendering that we just created. And then once this is done, we can select these two rendering hosts under sites. When you go to um, one of the microsites, let's, let's assume this is my microsite, and we go to settings, site grouping, uh, you can either create this file, uh, you can create this item if you don't have it, and then under settings, you will be able to select default, which is uh, the cloud version, or your local version, uh, or one of the two versions that you will have, because you will have one for microsites and one for main corporate website. So the last configuration that we want to update uh, is the uh, XM Cloud Build JSON. In here we have, this is again out of the box, uh, the original um, rendering host, the uh, original uh, rendering host that Sitecore creates when we deploy our changes to XM Cloud. And we want to copy it and create a second one, which will be, uh, we can change the name um, from XM Cloud Preview. Uh, I change it to XM Cloud Microsites Preview. And as you can see, path to the next JS application is main corporate website for the default one. And for microsites, I want to have a source microsite template. And by creating this additional section here, we are telling Sitecore Cloud during the build to create a second rendering host. And then we will be able to select uh, where I previously showed you uh, different rendering hosts, one for um, main corporate website and the second one for microsites. So this is a full configuration if you want to support microsites, especially if you want to have separate configuration for main corporate website and separate configuration for microsites. If you found this video useful, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and I see you in the next one.